welcome back to your final lesson and video in Swift for Beginners. Uh, first and foremost, if you've gotten all the way through, huge congrats to you. Um, we've covered quite a bit of material, and I wanted to take this opportunity to write out a little more complex code and apply a lot of the things that we've learned. And yeah, with that being said, let's get started. So we actually are picking up right where we left off, so let's get rid of this. And let's call this a summary. What we're going to be doing today is creating uh, a representation with classes of a neighborhood. Cool. So what does that mean? So we're going to have a class called neighborhood. It is going to have uh, an array called homes which are going to be types of homes and we need to have a class called home and what else do we need so each home has rooms so we want to have an array of rooms which is going to be an array of the room type object which we'll create down here and so on and so forth so what do we, what do we have going on so far so we have some classes we have some um, constants that are of type uh, array of either home or room. Um, now what else can we do? So let's say each house has a protocol called my address. So let's say we, uh, we create a protocol up here. Um, let's call it address data source. They'll have a function called my address which takes in nothing but returns a string we're going to say each home implements rather conforms to this protocol and we're going to return one two three main street and that's a protocol that we just added so now we got classes arrays and protocols we are also using the string here we are also going to define a variable or rather a bunch of variables on each of these rooms actually and we're going to say var color is blue var width is 12 var height rather let's do length is 32.5 so it's a fairly large room um, let's add some functions. So let's say is on second floor, which returns a bool. Let's just return false. So the, the point of me going through this exercise is to really exemplify. This is complaining because we don't have an initializer. So let's fix that. Rather, that's actually complaining because we didn't initialize this, which is okay for now. But uh, rather, the point of doing all this is to emphasize how we can combine all the fundamental building blocks that we've learned to create and model something in code quite specifically. So in this case, let's say we wanted an app that modeled um, a neighborhood. Let's say this is a part of Google Google Maps. So we would have a class that represents a neighborhood and it would hold on to an array of let's say homes and each home would hold on to an array of rooms and so on and so forth now we can have a protocol that we use to ensure that every instance of this home class represents uh, this protocol and respectively conforms to it with the function we are using ints down here and notice that we have this height which is a double so let's say we wanted to get the area of the room we would need to do width times height but if you wait a second you'll see i mean width times length sorry about that you'll see that this gives us an error because these are two different types so what we want to do here is we want to take this length and wrap it in int and if you recall we um went over this na this uh, notion of casting so now we have an array uh rather now we have area we can say an area is a int optional 
and let's say we wanted to say get area as a function and return an int. In here, we can exercise our knowledge of unwrapping an optional with a guard statement. So we can say guard value equals area else return. Otherwise, we can return value. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I really hope this helps uh, emphasize. Sorry, I forgot to put the let in here. Um, but I hope this emphasizes uh, the power that we now have to combine a lot of the components that we've learned and create a sophisticated uh, class and structure and objects and object-oriented object design. So uh, before I end this video and again congratulate you for getting through the entire course, I wanted to give a little bit of uh, where to go from here. So from here, I would strongly encourage you to practice the syntax, which is actually writing code. Um, the more you write, the more it'll be committed to your memory. And I think that's the best way to learn, personally speaking, and also having taught others. Um, I would also encourage you to take a lot of this and go and uh, go through a iOS course. And I will be actually personally providing one um, as well. And once you go through that course, you'll see that uh, of course, that course should be in Swift, but you'll see that a lot of this and a lot of what we've learned will apply to uh, Swift and in, in uh, rather will apply to iOS. And what you'll get out of it is you'll basically just be importing um, other libraries and frameworks and using bits and pieces of that framework to create stuff. So as a simple example, if you wanted to create a button on an iPhone screen, you would create a button and it takes a frame, which is the X and Y position and the size and the height of the actual uh, button. So we can say it's 0, 0, 100 wide and 20 high. And this is how you would create a button in an iPhone app. So I, I hope it's getting clear that all the Swift that we've learned is extremely applicable to iOS development and rather any development that is done in Swift. So here we have this UI button class, which represents a button. Uh, it gets initialized with a frame, which is a CG rect, which is a core graphic rectangle. <laughs>